Western Law Unboxing, the Dow of the Ten Beaded Changes. From form training, an advanced internal boxer should be issued the first piece of training equipment, the sword. This traditional training tool is best represented by the straight sword. But for the Western Lone Boxer, it normally is the real Dow. Every strategy and tactic is translated into an expression of one's essence, energy, and vitality. The sword is animated through internal skills connecting steel and flesh. With time and many hours of practice, it will vibrate one's intent when observed and felt by observers and opponents. With time, one's goal should be to concentrate one's vitality enough and issue it out in a like manner. Soon one will be able to transfer heat energy to touching the being. With cultivation, this energy can be transferred to cold steel and with more refinement electromagnetic force can be transferred. Sword form and functional sparring training to externalize one internal skill will develop such an ability. The idea that one should learn to cut wood refers to hitting the tree with the wooden sword to recover the Vedic alchemy methods that come from it. To carry water refers to swimming in open water. Running the mountain or hill training is done by running up and down and in circles and refers to moving up and down inclines in a spiral arm resistance. Eating bitter refers to knowing how hard and when to push yourself and exactly how to heal yourself. The knowledge necessary to heal is presented later in this book, but know this, the better one fights, the better one learns to heal himself. Internal skill is measured through external pressure. and the alchemy of balance between the extremes puts one in the center of moral behavior. With enough time and through these actions, one will be able to reach a fuller potential of moral behavior, thinking, doing, feeling. But again, healing is part of the conditioning process and is discussed in detail later in the book. Every major change is done through the seasons and should be seen and reviewed by the adepts of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine doctor. The Tai Chi Ball Regiment should, should be performed every day to massage the moving shoe points in the torso and stimulate major energizer points on the limbs one of five fascia connections between joints, ligaments, and tendons. This makes recovery from arduous training possible in less than 36 hours. Diet and Vedic Taoist alchemy must be equal to the task of nourishing the lower, middle, and upper dantians. There are six elemental posture exercises that one should do daily in some form or another, and two moving actions that should follow them. The cyclic repetitions of numbers must remain consistent sacred alchemy. The numeric alchemy, which is sacred, for beginning adepts is 3, 6, and 9. For more advanced adepts, the alchemy is 12, 36, and 108. These numbers delineate the counting for stilling, breathing, notion mantras, and motion cycles that one performs in stilling and moving meditation. Conditioning is the first step in the stilling and moving meditation process. 
process are done through postures. You draw the foundation for becoming an, becoming an adept at moving and stilling meditations. exercises are standard for us because in Western Warm Boxing, these four postures will help strengthen the um, yin motility vessel. If one can have a connection to anything other than the earth, one should connect with a circular object in Western Warm Boxing, that object is a Tai Chi ball or a medicine ball as we know. My standard is um, 30 pounds at this time, but it begins at 12. The alignment of the upper, middle, and lower dantiems help one to achieve a weightless feeling associated with the balance and the rooting necessary to achieve a standard. You can use these postures at least with regard to hug the tree and hold the kettle, which is basically a standing of the holding, standing of the arms outstretched in a circle, and the squatting of the arms outstretched in a circle, or at least holding the palms together. And um, if, one is, if, one, if one is able to do this, there, there are slight adjustments to posture that are supposed to happen. This is because the mind, body, and emotion, um, motor behavior is being um, shaped, molded. It's becoming sunken, circular, centered, and rhythmical. Um, done and performed in cyclic counts of mantra, which allow one to even internalize this even further. But first, the lower body must be strengthened. The lower dantian must be strengthened. Uh, the upper dantian must have the visual. And the middle dantian must have the emotional contact that allows one to make connections with that outside of itself. One holds each posture, uh, at least the two I've mentioned, for a minimum of six uh, four-minute sets or five-minute sets. Um, four six-minute sets or six four-minute sets add up to 24 minutes, which aligns oneself with the alchemy um, equal to the task of making an individual become uh, stronger than or at least reach its full potential or her full potential. If one does not have a weighted ball to carry when one does these exercises, then perform a standing cross leg seat and hold the kittle posture. Perform a nine count breath in and out cycle for each nostril and each posture. Do a higher count if you are more advanced. Do not perform cessation or retention in these postures unless you can do so without straining for air. Do six sets each for each posture with left hand and then six the right hand performing the breathing posture is exercise that using the 24 uh, count 24 minute idea idea and doing simply just the counts the three six and nine will suffice planking is one of the most it's probably the most uh, powerful meditative posture for centering uh, the mind during modal behavior uh, duress Stilling achieved in this posture is felt by anyone who touches your body as a hidden strength is developed. And that strength is normally called heavy and light. When the heavy and light idea is developed, it is possible to achieve uh, some great things. Uh, your power is felt, and it's felt before it's seen. This is a very powerful attack on one of your opponent's emotions.
emotional state if that state is not properly centered. Um, the headstand is considered the epitome of Vedic postures for the internal alchemy and external power one must achieve to master skill. The organs are required are reordered and positioned for better performance with long-standing practice. Being able to hold your stand for at least one minute uh, before resting is a good first achievement. Up to five minutes makes one extremely good at what one does. The circular system is strengthened during these exercises. The strength of balance is made more keen. The neck and arms are made are incredibly strengthened. The spine is again realigned. The limbic system is infused with fresh blood. Excessive emotions are balanced. The question now is how much time to spend in each posture and again. As mentioned, one minute is the first goal to master. Five minutes and you have achieved a standard that is beyond what most people can do. And in that sense, that means one's, if, one, if one compares oneself with others, then of course you have superior a skill. If one compares oneself uh, with himself, then use the process man, uh, the process of comparing what your performance was prior to your first performance, and as you move on, make sure that you can go further and further with comfort in that posture. Even though these are basic to Western long boxing, these are advanced exercises that are to be practiced in an alternating fashion for 24 to 36 minutes. The alchemy is found in three places, the alignment of the Bantians, the focused attention on the Dantiams during the breathing exercise, and finally the breathing process itself. One performs the Vedic or um, extended stomach or an inhale, contracted and exhale breathing method, and one focuses on one Dantiam at a time. Again, perform these with the sacred alchemy. One performance equals nine cycles per dantian of breathing, retention, and succession, or flowing breathing, or measured breathing, even uh, inhale and exhale. The sitting on the floor asana is a basic posture for resting after uh, one has done the first four. It completes the set before moving meditation is performed. The simple pose which is a cross-legged posture, is the best for the basic seated posture and the easiest to master. Differences in the posture have to do with the hand positions, which are called mudras. The first posture is known as the call to witness posture. It is used to stabilize the structure of the posture while performing visceral yang internal movements that will be discussed in chapter five. Kapalabhate and eight seated brocade regiments, brocade regiments use this posture in some of its exercises. The next posture is known as the wisdom posture, wisdom, wisdom mudra posture. It is used for the yin type exercises. These types are regiments that do not require control of the breath as much as control of visual processes that many times include mantras and self-talk processes. Alternate nasal breathing is the best exercise for balancing the modal behaviors on a micro and macro cosmic level of conscious and unconscious function. Breathing cycles should include cessation and retention of breath whenever possible. At a 1-1-1-1 ratio or a 1-1-4-2 ratio involving cessation, inhalation, retention, and exhalation of breath. The goal is to stay in the posture for a minimum of 24 minutes. Heaven and earth are the elements guiding the, the development of these skills. Running in place and sprawling is an awesome exercise to perform. It is high impact in movement and allows for the development of aerobic, anaerobic, and enhances proprioception in a static posture. Sim simply standing for a three count breath cycle and then sit on the floor for a three count breath cycle without hands touching the floor and stand back up for the same breath cycle and finally fall forward and motion to the floor.
playing posture will exercise the adept very, very well. Such exercises give evidence of longevity through the demonstration of suppleness and strength of body. Regular practice gives the adept the conditioning base needed to begin sword training. Conditioning methods that affect the development of upper, lower, and middle dantium is connected to the skill we are able to present in form and functional application. I dare say the sword skill, when developed, is pivotal in the development of unarmed martial skill. One skilled in the sword and unarmed combat meaning another only skilled in unarmed combat rarely have a chance of holding their own contest. For the Western long boxer, an edge weapon is learned early. The stabbing and beating of the tree and the bouncing, bouncing and pressing of the colliding balls and teeth springing into the ball begins the foundation of building combative force and skill. There are 13 basic sword methods in Western Long Box and Combatives, and that is equal to the task found in Tai Chi Sword. These armed movements are the basis for unarmed combat. They should be complementary in form. They are the stab strike, slash, the brush off, the burst open, the chop, deflect, split, stir, intercept, press, point, and upstroke. As mentioned before, hopefully my son will uh, see this and I want him to learn from this. This is also to show you uh, one of my best students ever. He's nine years old and quite frankly, <laughs> the best student I probably will ever train. He's a badass. He gets his ass kicked every day or every time he trains. He's only nine years old going on ten, and believe me, he's a master in training. His movements are, uh, and his spirit is one of a warrior, and he's learning to farm. He's also learning to heal. Basically, in a short way, I'm saying it, 